Hello, everyone. It's 9.32 a.m. on Friday, April 3rd, Mountain Time. And as promised, I am starting to um, starting my home retreat with you guys. And um, uh, you might be watching this in replay, um, but uh, we're starting a retreat um, as a way to uh, transform our experience in COVID-19 pandemic uh, into one that's positive and um, positive. Sorry, I'm out of, bit out of words. This words this morning. Just gonna look at my notes and wait for people to come on. Okay, so welcome to my home. I'm in the basement and it's going to be the new norm for now. And uh, I'm doing, I have stopped seeing patients for about two, three weeks now in person. And I've had a few uh, phone consults, so. Okay. So if you um, want to work with me while we're, uh, going through this time, um, feel free to call my office number and you can find that at my website and I'll leave it um, in the chat as well. Okay, so I want to start uh, with uh, thanking people for showing up here and uh, I know it's busy for everyone but I feel that um, it seems like it's really a busy time for everyone and yet we have we should have more time now because we're not commuting to work and we don't have to drop off kids at school or we don't have to go to the gym maybe so i feel that like even for me um i have a lot of time but if i'm not carving time out for myself to reconnect with myself um and to just listen to our voices within then there is a lot of opportunities for weeds to grow in our heads. When I say weeds, I mean things like um, worries and anticipations that we hear from mostly the media, um, maybe from social media as well. Um, we will have worries about children, what's going to be happening. Um, to their school year and next year and you know this whole year is it has been on a stall and um, just looking at my notes here I actually plan this to be very organic and spontaneous but I still have some notes just in case I fall off my uh, agenda here uh, I know most of us are not most of us but we have a lot of chatter in our in our heads um, just worrying about our work, um, worry about our elderly parents, or about care worrying about our grandparents and rent even, uh, you know, income taxes coming up uh, and also our financial situation. So if we don't carve time out in our daily lives, there's a lot of opportunities, opportunities that um, our worries and anticipations will grow. And I feel that a lot of times our worries are coming from, for me, uh, from the media. Um, the media sort of help shape what we should think. Um, and it's, it's good to be uh, thinking ahead, uh, just like our government is doing and our um, health, health officials are doing. It's good to be thinking ahead but I find that when I'm not careful, when I'm not selective of what I'm hearing, um, I can myself, I can get into this uh, headspace where I'm worrying a lot. So for example, last night, and I don't watch the news often, I might watch the news like once a day just to catch up on the number of uh, people infected, number of people, um, uh, who have passed on, uh, the number of people who have recovered, um, just more the imp important information that I think it's important to uh, pay attention to, uh, as well as, um, you know, what's going on with the community. 
And um, so last night I was watching the 11, 11 p.m. news and they're talking about, okay, you know, if you're not commuting to work and you have two cars at home, you can cancel your car insurance. And uh, I was thinking, oh yeah, I'm not doing that. And you know, for this whole time, the last two, three weeks, I haven't thought about my car insurance that I have to pay, which I have on um, automatic payment plan. Uh, is it called automatic payment plan? Um, but I haven't thought about it, but the media is telling me, oh, I should be looking ahead. And, you know, for about, I don't know, a few minutes, I was, I was like apprehensive about, um, about my car insurance um, payment coming up. So that's what I mean. Like, I feel like the media helps us to kind of put things in context, but we can also create our own context. So we're not being pulled by this wave to worrying, um, worrying about our lives, worrying about anything really. So it's important to kind of distinguish what's you, what really resonates with you and what's out there. Um, and, um, Pretty much, I feel that a lot of a lot of our stress comes from what we're told that we should be worrying about instead of what we truly feel from within. Okay, and if you are uh, here with me, please do interact with me. Leave me comments. I'm monitoring as we go. Okay, and. What do I want to talk about? Um, so for the ga the gathering that we're, we're having, um, I call it a, a live gathering on Facebook or um, it's really a home retreat for me to kind of reset my rhythm, redefine what this uh, pandemic is doing uh, to my life and to everyone's lives. Um, yeah, just to redefine what it means uh, being in this pandemic and um, this live gathering will be happening for the whole month of April on uh, Fridays. Uh, basically, well, let me rephrase this. For the whole month of April, I will be uh, kind of resetting um, this rhythm and uh, being more present with myself through this home retreat. And on Fridays, so every Fridays this month, I will be here live at 9.30 a.m. Uh, to share with you my insights and any revelations I have. And I encourage you to do that in my um, with me, either through privately messaging me or through this um, Facebook page. Um, and uh, if you do uh, interact with me, uh, you will enter a draw to win a free consultation on the phone with me at the end of the, the four week retreat, okay? And I'll talk about that later if you have any questions. Um, I want to make this live gathering or this home retreat uh, super non-scripted. So that's, that's why you see that I am like all over the place what I'm talking about. And um, I don't know how it's going to pan out. Um, I have a few agendas I want to talk about. For example, today we'll talk about some stretching, uh, some teas that I would recommend start drinking now. And, uh, but most of the, top, the part, there will be a lot of talking, a, a lot of reflection. It will be a conversation with everyone who's um, either watching right now or watching in replay. Um, I want to be really laid back and spontaneous. And um, you might feel that while we're doing this and or you're listening to me or we're maybe we're in the middle of meditating, meditation or just sitting quietly, it might feel like a waste of time to you as how that's how I usually would feel if I'm not in that headspace. But again, like I said, um, we are intentionally carving out this time so that we can uh, remove the weeds, the weeds that's growing in our heads and that those are like worries and anxieties, right? So um, it is a choosing if you want to be here. And um, but I find that when somebody helps me to get in the zone of just this quietness or peace, 
um, it really creates a lot of um, stillness and and faith in me. So, so if you're here, welcome. And if you want to come back and uh, join me, that's great too. Um, again, it will be happening every Friday morning anyway. Um, all right. So if you have any questions for me, do leave in the comment area below. And I'm not sure how long this will go, but I'm thinking I'm approximating about half an hour to 45 minutes. Again, um, just leaving it really organic. Okay, so let's start with a meditation. And in this meditation, you can call it a meditation or um, a silent sitting. Sorry, I'm moving around a lot. Uh, I just set up this space in my basement just this morning. Hopefully things uh, work and you can see me and hear me clearly. Hello everyone, please say hi if you're here. Sorry for moving my uh, screen quite a bit. Okay, so we're just going to sit quietly here and um, you can call a meditation, I'll call a meditation. Um, but some people will call it sitting quietly and just being present with, with yourself and at this moment. And things will come into your uh, mind and you're just going to slightly acknowledge that and then let it go. Okay. Hi, everyone. We're just doing a meditative silence right now. Hi, Lisa. Hello, Lisa. So there's no music and you can put on music, um, but you don't need music. I don't need music at this moment. I've already done this, this um, silence practice this morning. Hi, Carmen. Okay, so we're just sitting here silently. We're trying to reconnect with ourselves by just sitting in silence. You don't need to bring um, an increased focus to your breaths, but you could. But just hearing the sounds that's going on, I hear an airplane outside my house. And just noticing where we are, we're in our home, which is protecting us. And it's, it's, a, it's a shelter. As much as we are craving to go outside and connect with others, we have to remind ourselves that we're in a lot of, I am in a lot of gratitude for this home protecting me because uh, in this much of, um, I guess, danger outside, where, where could we be if it wasn't for our homes, right? So our home is providing a lot of, um, a lot of shielding and it's a safe space for us. And I, I'm so thankful that we get to stay home, okay? And I feel that that's attitude to have uh, instead of crying, not crying, but instead of feeling trapped at home. To me, this is my, my home is my sanctuary. And um, I'm really thankful for, for having a, a roof over me, right? So yeah, since we're here, um, I'm just coming out of this silent sitting. Um, I want to talk about gratitude um, of this, experience and I feel we are very fortunate. Some people say we're not fortunate to be in um, in this time that we're facing this pretty scary pandemic. But I feel there's a gra there is a meaning behind um, all this. And you know, I thought I was the only one thinking about this, but after talking to many friends and some of my patients, um, I feel that Everybody, many people think like the way I am thinking, and that is 
um, there is a deeper meaning behind what's going on in the world. And it's a way it's awakening our spirituality. Uh, speaking of which, um, there is a really great video by Eckhart Tolle. Uh, I believe the co- the the um, title is called Conscious Awakening, um, and it's called and I'll I'll put it on here later. Uh, it's called Awakening in the Face of Adversity, um, and he is. <laughs> Eckhart Tolle is um, this really gentle uh, soul, and you know, I I actually had to speed up the way the uh, video, but he was talking it so slowly, and it was very healing. But basically, um, I had the insight that this pandemic is happening for us, and I know some of you guys are spiritual. And uh, it's almost like it wasn't for this. When will we get the chance? To, when will we get the chance to reconnect with each other in distance like this? When do we get an opportunity to um, reflect on ourselves, to reevaluate our everyday life choices, everyday choices? Sorry. When do we get to? Um, slow down really i felt that the world was going at a very fast pace and um as somber as it is that so many people have passed and so many people have lost someone uh, lost their jobs um, lost friends and families um, i feel that the earth was trying to tell us something right the world or i don't know there's if there's a new like i'm I'm not not that if there's a god but the universe is telling us something and you know there were so many um things happening in the world like uh wildfires i i can i can remember the last time we didn't have a wildfire uh in the summer here in alberta um in the last two three two three um years two three summers we've had wildfires forest fires and then australia and then we know that uh, up in the north the ice sheets are melting so to me this was an awakening call for for all of us and uh, when do we get to spend time with kids right i don't have kids but i know people who have kids they're they're stuck at home with their kids and um it's it's a very humbling um opportunity for us to be able to 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 be with our families right um i haven't seen my mom and my my uh, other brother my other brother who's in i mean not other, my one of my brothers uh in taiwan and i don't know when i'll see them because we can't really fly internationally now um but you know we're we, we're at the luxury of facetime uh, and the internet zoom calls Hello, Malik. Um, And so I feel like as much as we're losing uh, some things, we are also gaining very important, close to our core, close to our value um, items, right? Intangible things. Um, Yeah, so there's that gratitude piece that I want to share with everyone. And then I want to talk about how this experience of have affected or has uh, affected people who are more extroverted. Um, So apparently extroverts are not doing well with this stay at home um, uh, movement um, because they're extroverts. They are, I talk, I talk in terms of they because I'm an introvert, sorry. Um, but I personally, I, I am really relishing in the ability to stay at home most of my time. Um, but for extroverts, it's pretty difficult because um, going out and socializing and or even just being out there is the way that if you're an extrovert, you feel more re-energized so um so yeah apparently if you are not comfortable with this you're probably an extrovert if you don't know that already um and then i hear that 
in the population, older people are not doing as well in the social distancing or physical distancing because, um, and especially people who are retired and beyond, because once we're retired, we get out to connect with the world every day. We, we get stuff done outside the house and that's how we find meaning in our lives if uh if we're retired right so the social distancing or self-isolation is becoming uh harder on older people um so i would remind people to reach out to their elderly friends and families and then um yeah speaking of uh young versus old that old people are not doing as well i think kids I don't have kids, but I wonder what kids are doing. If you have children, let me know. Um, but I was just thinking if I was a child, this would be really fantastic because it's kind of like a, a long ended um, or early summer break almost. And um, there's so much to learn at home and outside of the classroom. So, you know, getting to spend more time with my my mom or getting to just do your own thing and not having to, um, I don't know, I guess homeschooling might be a different, different scenario, but yeah, just, just kind of venturing into what, what that would lo look like for children. Um, and then, um, a lot of people are processing this differently. Uh, at first I think most people are in a panic mode just two, three weeks ago. And then as we kind of settle into this new norm, more and more people are processing in the way that I am now, which is with more gratitude, um, feeling more humble, uh, more humble by this experience. Um, and I have to be cognizant that, and we have to be for those who feel that this is an experience, um, a very extraordinary experience um, and we take it positive positively uh, there are people who are not spiritual and we have to respect that and we have to be compassionate with those who don't feel the same way right and um i just want i guess in this gratitude piece i want to um share that the, the idea that the world has slowed down for us it's not it's really for us because I, we don't i don't know we, where we were going before right um in terms of how how fast things were moving um i remember like having to uh learn a new app that we have to download on our phone um you know pretty frequently we have to learn a new social connection um platform like TikTok is the newest thing i hear i hear um which I, I ha I'm just um, I, I don't I don't even venture into that because I feel like I can only manage Facebook I mean Instagram and Snapchat Snapchat not I can't even touch that right so I feel the world was moving really fast um, our phones were prompted to get updated um, you know every few months and then you know there's a new phone that comes out and we have to we have this um, urge. And I don't know if that urge is coming from within or an urge that's kind of imposed on us to get a new phone, right? So I don't know if you feel that with me, but I still have iPhone 7 from two years ago, and I don't know how many generations of iPhone there is now, so pardon me. And I'm not judging. I'm not judging anyone who has the newest technology, but there, I'm just trying to um, share with you my, my feeling about how the world was moving so fast. Hello, people. Hello, everyone. If you're here, say hi. Okay, so that was a good um, start after we had done a little bit of silent sitting and um, just talking about gratitude. Uh, if you feel the same way or if you don't feel the same way um, that I do about this pandemic, do do feel free to leave your comment. Your, your feelings are legit uh, and valid. So so I want to maybe share with you some stretches um, or we can do stretches here together. There is no form to follow. Um, and I am one of the people who don't st stretch enough, um, especially after my workout. 
And actually, I have been pretty cocooned inside the house、uh, now that my gym membership is、uh, halted. And、um, so, why don't we do some stretches together and、uh, put down your phone or whatever you're watching, and stand up? And I'm going to move to my mat,、um, my yoga mat here behind me, and then we'll just do some stretches. And、um, if you just woke up from from your sleep, you can do it on your bed. And、uh, again, there's no form, and you can start wherever you feel the most tense, right? For me, it's usually my shoulders, my upper back, but we'll do some stretches. You don't have to follow me. You could if you want,、um, and I'll also post a few、um, stretches、uh, at the end <clears throat> of this、uh, live or somewhere on the on the on the、um, Facebook post or maybe on my website. I'm not sure, but I'll I'll do that. Um, yeah, it's really important to get moving、um, these days because I know many of us are just sitting here, sit like you know, for hours on end because we're not going anywhere. But、uh, we know that inactivity can increase high blood or can increase blood pressure. So make sure you're stretching out,、um, you know, once once and、uh, sorry every fifty minutes、uh, if you're sitting for a long time, and that just gets your circulation going.、Um, I wrote a. A piece of、um, blog or an article、um, about、uh, the consequences of sitting a long time, especially for menopausal women. So、um, you could find that out, and I'll post it as well. The link to the web, the、um, article. So I'm gonna just drop off my earphone here, and then we're gonna do some stretches together.、Um, I don't know, maybe five minutes, but. I'm gonna draw. I, I'm going to remove my earbuds. All right. So I don't know if you can see me.、So、I have a yoga mat. Where is it? There we go. Or not? Sorry. <laughs> All right. Hopefully, you can see me better. I set this up earlier, but now I'm like not sure what I'm doing. Okay. Maybe just the camera is different now. All right. Okay. So we'll start with some stretches. However, form you you want. Hopefully, you can hear me. So we'll just some stretches. Stretching out your ribs. Okay, and then I like to do a particular stretch. Feeling a stretch, just around here. Stretching here. That's pretty sore for me. One of the stretches I like when I'm sitting. If you've been sitting for a long time at work. 
is, I don't want to be a steamy, but uh, it's just sit um, with your legs planted on the floor and you're going to use your opposite hand on the opposite knee. So left hand to the right knee and then you're going to turn your kind of your abdomen. Okay. And then you're going to use your right hand kind of holding the chair behind you and you'll feel a pull, you'll feel a pull like right here. Okay. That's a nice stretch for me. And that you're you're stretching the rhomboids and the scaling muscles. And then the other side, so right hand on the outside of your left knee, your left hand goes to the um, chair, um, so back of the chair, and you're going to kind of torque your, um, torque is a word, like torsion your upper body. So you feel a pull kind of on the left upper back. Okay, and don't forget to breathe. Okay, then that's one of my favorite uh, stretches when I'm just sitting all day long. Um, the other, another um, stretch I like to do is to stretch your adductors, uh, abductors, right? So you're gonna lean forward, and you feel the stretch behind your knees, and then you're going to shift your weight toward the left, okay? So you're lengthening the right abductors. Okay, so your left knee is slightly bent. And then you're gonna put the weight back to the center. And you're gonna shift your weight at your hips toward the right. Now then you're stretching the left adductors. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but just follow my movements if you want. Right, and then well, you can see me here. Oops, sorry about that. And then we're going to pull in our feet toward um, our hips, sitting with our legs, sort of what do you call it? Just follow me. <laughs> Just pull your feet towards your hips. You feel the stretch. And don't forget to breathe. And the next thing is You can use a towel if you don't have a uh, TheraBand. We're going to put the TheraBand just, uh, just in front of the heels. Okay, straight. And then shift 
your foot onto the other side, just to give that pull. Okay. And maybe the quads. There we go. The quads. Pull your feet, foot toward the toward the bum. Okay, so that's it. All right. Okay, hello everyone. If you are just joining us now, we're doing our home retreat, and it's day one or week one today. And if you're here, do make, yeah, do say hi. And um, if you do say hi, uh, try to tell us what, uh, what kind of insights you've gained over the last two, three weeks since the pandemic has taken place. And um, if you do leave uh, your comment, you will be entering a draw to win a consult, free consult with me on the phone, okay? All right, so we just finished some stretching. And all right, I think this is what everybody was anticipating was for me to talk about viral teas, teas for virus infection or prevention. Okay, so I got a lot of stuff here. Let me take a sip of water. Okay, so um, I have published a article on my website on some of the teas that are uh, really good for uh, preventing viral infections. Um, and there's a big dis uh, there's a disclaimer about this. Um, just because I'm recommending teas doesn't mean you don't see a doctor if you have to. Um, these teas are for antiviral. They are strictly antivirals. They help. Um, they help prevent the virus attaching onto the access points of um, of the lungs. Um, and um, there are some teas that uh, I had talked about in the article for managing anxiety. So let's go through it, and I'll post a uh, link to that article that I've written. Um, but uh, I guess. Um, I'll show you what I have uh, lately uh, to kind of prepare myself for any kind of cold and flu um, infection, even if I came down with a COVID-19 infection. Um, but uh, yeah, so make sure that there's a disclaimer with this, right? Um, okay, so I have been making ginger tea using Instapot, right? So the first thing is some fresh ginger. Uh, I'm going to actually, sorry for the noise. I'm going to plug my earphone in. I just think there might be better, better uh, audio. So ginger tea, fresh ginger. I store my ginger um, you'll see that they have these eyes they're growing right these eyelets they're growing I store my ginger tea in the shade or in a paper bag because um, it does keep the ginger fresher and you'll usually find that if you keep it in shade they'll start to sprout okay and um they're not like potatoes where once they're sprouted you're not supposed to eat them if they're sprouted ginger sprouted it's perfect you can still eat it okay so um i got i got a bunch of ginger tea while people was trying to stockpile toilet paper um i bought extra ginger but uh we're not really supposed to stockpile so um i have a handful of ginger if you uh, cannot find ginger in the store the fresh ginger which a few times I have been to the store now and you cannot find ginger what you can get is 
this guy. Ground ginger. And it's funny because I've gone to the spice aisle for dry ground ginger and there's none left. So where, where, where did I find this is uh, the international aisle. So this is just at Superstore, right? So you can get, you, can, you can get the ground ginger at, in the international aisle if you cannot find it next to your spices, okay? And um, so what I do when I make ginger tea, and why would we uh, have ginger tea at this time? And we know that most of the times when we get a cold or flu, um, we make some ginger tea. Uh, you would want to do that at the beginning of your infection. So if you're just coming out with sore throat um, and maybe a bit of uh, stuffy nose or cough, actually no, cough depends. But if you're starting to develop um, hoarseness, so out of voice, um, then we want to stop ginger tea. Ginger is very anti-inflammatory. So in the beginning of an infection, um, your body will produce a lot of oxidants meaning that it will go into a lot of inflammation. So having ginger tea helps to combat that. Um, I find that ginger, sometimes if you uh, are just at the beginning of your flu or your cold, if you start with ginger tea, that kind of creates a sauna inside your body. And um, that can actually kick the bug, okay? So... Um, ginger tea is a really good place to start if you're just looking into making more um, ways to care for yourself during this season. Um, I What I do with my ginger tea is I cut them into about an inch, I, right? So, let's see. so I don't quite cut them. I don't quite slice them. I just cut them into inches or two inches like i would maybe snap off this but inches um of about the size of your thumb of your i guess your nail kind of and then i would not slice them but i would smash them either with a meat tenderizer or just you know lay lay your knife flat and then hit your knife with your um, fist right just kind of thump it down um then I will maybe, I don't know, use, put a bunch of ginger in a pot and I filled it, uh, cover it with water, filtered water. And then I just put it in like Instapot, right? Um, you could also boil it over just the regular stove on, bring to a boil um, and then simmer it for, simmer at low for about 20 minutes. So quite a long simmer. And if you like your ginger tea pretty spicy, the trick is to add a little bit of ground ginger at the end, okay? You don't want to add too much because then you'll be drinking your ginger tea and there's a lot of grit in, in the tea. It's not pleasant. Once you finish boiling or simmering, you can put um, either unpasteurized honey or brown sugar. So brown sugar has a lot of minerals and um, that can be really good when you're, when you're trying to fight off an infection, right? Um, with honey, that's also really good. And speaking of honey, I'll talk about lemon water uh, later as well. But honey is a prebiotic, meaning that it's a, uh, it's a food for the probiotic in your body in your gut. So a probiotic is a bacteria that is helpful to maintain the, the balance of your microflora in the gut. Um, and having a balanced microflora is essential for your immune system, right? Prebiotic, on the other hand, is the food that the probiotic eats. So like I said, um, honey, um, even vegetables will have prebiotics. Um, Fruits have prebiotics as well, okay? So um, I get unpasteurized honey. Uh, it's not for children under one. Actually, honey in general is just not for children under one. Um, but I get unpasteurized honey, meaning that it's not been boiled or processed because when we boil or, or uh, process them, uh, we do lose the enzyme in honey. Uh, so if we buy the uh, unpasteurized ones, they have the enzyme that come that naturally come in honey and i just buy like the cheap honey uh creamed honey and i couldn't find anything that was liquid that was unpasteurized so i just got the cream honey which was unpasteurized 
So that's this is what I use. And I, it's kind of like an ice cream tub. So I use ice cream scoop to scoop out the honey. Um, but um, honey is also a antimicrobial. If you buy honey, uh, it'll never expire because honey naturally has um, antimicrobial property. Um, yeah, so it's a very good prebiotic, very good food for the pro probiotic in your gut, right? Okay, um, so other than making ginger tea, you can also make uh, lemon water. Um, lemon has vitamin C, we know that. Another thing is lemon is very alkalinizing. So if we were to come down with an infection and there's a lot of in inflammation going on in the beginning especially, um, uh, the lemon can help to alkalinize that because when we're going through a lot of inflammation, there's a lot of oxidation going on and that can make our blood quite acidic, right? Um, and that can make you feel quite lethargic. You might start to have joint pains, back aches, stuff like that, um, and just feeling lethargic overall. Uh, so lemon water helps to combat that in that it's alkalinizing, right? Alkalinizing the inflammation going on alkalinizing your blood that's caused by the inflammation, right? Um, yeah, aside from the vitamin C, okay? And then we have more here that I will show you. So just gonna take a look at my notes. Uh, oh yeah, in the ginger, when I talked about the ginger, you don't need to have too much. Um, when you have too much ginger tea in a day, uh, you'll start to feel really thirsty. Uh, and for menopausal women, sometimes that's actually um, not a great thing. So, and, and that could actually trigger hot flashes or night sweats as well. So I would say just a cup a day and you can dilute it, right? Uh, in terms of ginger tea. And then um, just making sure I cover everything, okay. All right, the next thing is more antiviral stuff, right? So um, I want to introduce licorice. So licorice, I don't have the box, but you can get the stash version, the stash. So st you can get this at Superstore. It's called licorice spice. And um, it's very sweet in nature. The licorice root naturally has a very subtle sweet taste to it. Um, this one comes with cinnamon, um, orange peel, anise, vanilla. It's very tasty. Um, but I did note that if you have hypertension or if you're pregnant, um, you should not drink licorice tea. Licorice tea, or sorry, licorice has a compound, not compound, but licorice can prevent uh, viruses from attaching to the access points of your body. So uh, when I say access points, the entry points into your body, right? Uh, so licorice does that as well as cinnamon. And interestingly, this this pa pouch or this package does come with cinnamon. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. Um, so yeah, not not good for uh, hypertension, pregnant women, and if you don't have high blood pressure, but if you start drinking this tea and every time you drink it you have a headache, then that's also a sign that you should stop, okay? So licorice tea is really great. Um, there are so many different brands that sell licorice tea. You can get uh, the stash. Uh, the other brand they sell licorice tea is uh, Celestial or medicinal tradition sorry traditional medicine traditional medicinal sorry this one's this is the brand right and they have licorice tea as well um these ones so sometimes you might not find all the teas that we're going to be talking about here but um be, be in the tea aisle or a coffee aisle so you want to make sure you venture into the health food aisle in, uh, in your grocery store. I found these ones in um, the health food, health food aisle in Superstore. So that's the other brand that carries licorice. But I do want to show you my licorice that I drink um, on a regular basis. Uh, so this is in a Ziploc bag. I keep it in the freezer. And where I got these ones, so I'll just show you what they look, they look like. 
like flakes. Oh, they're like um, roots dried up and cut um, kind of diagonally crosswise, right? So I would put one uh, licorice, what do you call it? Um, one unit or one flake and I put it in um, hot water, let it steep. And that water will get pretty, pretty sweet, okay? So I might put it in like a thermos like this, right? Okay. All right. And then the next thing is, where are we? Oh, we're almost an hour. Almost done here. So that's licorice tea. If you get this, um, where you can get this is at a local apothecary. Um, you can also get this um, at, sorry, there's a, there's an apothecary called Apothecary in Inglewood. And um, I have posted the link to that store on my blog. Um, but if you Google Apothecary in Inglewood, it'll show up um, and you can order online from there. I think they're not, they're doing curbside pickup now. But I got this one at a Chinese herb store, which you sometimes will see in Chinatown or like a store next to TNT. Um, and they're readily available. Um, yeah, most most those most of those Chinese herbal store will carry them. And if you have an acupuncturist or a doctor of Chinese medicine, they probably have it too. So you can also buy from them. And uh, so once I get them, I put them in Ziploc and I freeze them. Right? You don't want you don't have to freeze, um, but I just know that I won't be finishing them too soon. Uh, do not put them in the fridge, just in the freezer. And then, um, or you can also put it in a pan in the pantry in a dry area. And the next thing I want to talk about is cinnamon. So remember, I talked about that licorice is uh, antiviral. It it prevents the virus from attaching onto the entry points in your in your mucosa membrane, also on your lungs. Another thing is like uh, cinnamon, and uh, you can definitely just sprinkle some cinnamon in your breakfast or in your tea, not too much, you don't wanna choke. Um, but I really like cinnamon sticks. And again, they're uh, out of stock in the space, spice aisle. So I picked them up at uh, in the international aisle where they sell a lot of uh, East Indian spices. So this is the cinnamon. So cinnamon sticks. So what I do is I take one and I put it in, again, in a thermos with hot water. And then um, once that hot water cools, it'll turn pretty sweet as well. Okay, so cinnamon and licorice has the same function in um, uh, combating the beginning, the onset of an infection, right? Okay, so next one, I wanna make sure uh, I'm moving quickly. The next tea I want to talk about is mint. Uh, I don't have mint. I went to the store yesterday and all the fresh mint are gone. I'm not sure why uh, or they're not restocked. But mint, the mint family has antiviral um, properties. So you can just get mint from your backyard if you have or if your um, garden. Uh, you can get fresh mint bunches or you can get mint um, tea. So mint has that property. I can get mint green tea. I think mint green tea is more green tea than uh, mint itself. Uh, the mint is just for flavor, but uh, peppermint is also a great choice. So, sorry. Mint tea and peppermint. They are antiviral. So it's really convenient that you have these in your, in your um, pantry. If you have pre-existing acid reflux or heartburn, um, the mint tea might aggravate it, so just watch out. Uh, another form of mint tea is called lemon balm, and you might have seen it earlier when I was talking about this brand of teas, traditional medicines. So lemon balm is a very specific mint that can be um, actually very very good for antivirals it also it helps to um you know when you get sick you get pretty lethargic and melissa uh, sorry not melissa melissa is the melissa is the latin name but lemon balm has the property to uh, help you not feel so fatigued when you are sick um, it's also good when um, you have a bit of anxiety in the background and lemon balm is really really good for that so it's also an anxiolytic tea 
So you can get that in the health food aisle in your regular store, regular grocery store. And then the next thing is, uh, what did I have here? Elderberry. Um, I couldn't find elderberry anywhere. Uh, I know David's Tea used to carry a blend that has elderberry, but I think they no longer carry it. Um, you might be able to get some elderberry juice in like health food stores or even in a health food aisle in your regular grocery store. And, um, but yeah, if you can get elderberry, dried elderberries, you can make tea out of them. And they're also really good for uh, antiviral, okay? Uh, a word on lemon balm, if you are, um, if you have hypothyroid and you're on either thyroxine or synthroid, um, you want to stay away from lemon balm because it's a antagonist to TSH. And um, in general, you just want to avoid lemon balm if you have a thyroid issue because that can mess up with, uh, with your drug, right? Uh, the next thing is uh, astragalus and ginseng. So these are immune adaptogens. They work kind of like um, phytoestrogen. So a phytoestrogen is a estrogen-like molecule that act as a um, balancer of estrogen in your body. Uh, so if your body is low on estrogen, a phytoestrogen like um, flax seeds can help to increase your estrogen levels if you're low. And if you have too much estrogen produced by your body, the phytoestrogen, which is a flax seed, can reduce your estrogen load. So kind of the same idea when, when it comes to astragalus um, or an, adap an adaptogen. I don't have astragalus here. Um, you might find some uh, blends of tea will have astragalus. Um, so it's a very good um, immune modulator, okay? So that if you get infection, you're not going to be secreting too much uh, fluids that could potentially make you sicker. Um, and nor will it, um, sorry, the adaptogen, so astragalus, can also make sure that if you don't have enough cytokines or immune globulins that help regulate your um, infection if you don't have enough of that protein it can also upregulate that so astragalus is one of the common uh, adaptogen i don't have it here sometimes you can find them in a supplement form uh, but i do want to show you what it could look like um, i have some ginseng here as you can see this is just ginseng american um North American ginseng. And the astragalus looks a little bit like this, but it's sliced uh, longitudinal wise, okay? But ginseng is another adaptogen, but it's not very specific, specific to virus, okay? But you could also use it. The next thing, uh, tea I want to maybe talk about is some anxiolytic teas. So I know that mo many of us are a little bit uh, nervous at this time, um, apprehensive about our jobs, about what's going on, what's going to be happening coming up. So chamomile is one uh, anxiolytic. It allows you to feel at ease. Um, this one, particular from traditional medicinals, has lavender, and that's also a very uh, relaxing, uh, nutritive tea as well. Okay, so you can get that one at the uh, superstore in the health food aisle and melissa uh, sorry melissa i, I keep on saying melissa because there's melissa here so lemon balm the latin name is called melissa officinalis okay so they're they're interchangeable so lemon balm is another anxiolytic you can couple it you don't want to take them together but you can um, interchangeably drink them and i went to superstore yesterday just for the for this retreat right i found this tea by celestial and it's called the sleepy time tea right and i like this tea because it comes with chamomile which we talked about it's anxiolytic it has spearmint which we talked about it's antiviral and it also has something called hawthorn hawthorn is it's in a very smaller quantity, small quantity, but Hawthorne is really good for preventing lung injury. 
Okay, so in the case of COVID-19, it would be really good for that, right? I think that's all the teas I have um, to share with you. And again, I'll share that link to more exp more details on the tea in in the um, post. And then one thing I do want to also encourage you to check out is the five day detox. And you can find my five day detox uh, program on my website. So you can find that at calgarymenopause.com. Under the 14 day detox tab, you can actually select the five day detox uh, or that, um, what it called, button and you can download it there. Uh, and then, oh yeah, so while we're talking about detox, um, I thought one thing to share with you uh, when it comes to managing your meals, maybe you can also add some mint in your kale salad and that actually tastes pretty good. And again, we talked about mint can be really good for you in terms of an antiviral property. And I, my voice is running pretty low and we're pretty much out of time. Anyway, so that concludes today and I'm so excited you've joined me on this retreat. Uh, it will happen over this whole month of April and I'll be here uh, Friday mornings at 9 30 mountain time and if you have any questions leave me your question in this uh, below this live or you can also directly message me on Facebook uh, Facebook messenger and I would love to hear any revelations or insights you have from this pan pandemic or any insights you might gather over this next week um, and if you do uh, you know, you do share your insights, you'll be entering a draw to win a free consultation with me on the phone. So, and that draw will be happening uh, four weeks after. So that's that's something really excited to, to do if you uh, want to participate. Uh, I'd love to hear any wins and lo wins or losses that you have um, and any, any revelation like I talked about. All right, I think that is all I have for today. And I'm so excited that we've started this. And um, is there anything I wanted to say? Yeah, no, not really. Just keep calm, as in create time and carve time out in your everyday life to sit quietly. And you don't need to contemplate on anything, just sit quietly and have that time for yourself every day that will be very nutritive and it can reset your attitude or your um, perspective about this pandemic all right everyone thank you for being here i'll see you next friday at 9 30 a.m mountain time take care <music>